my life just changed quite quickly. You've been obviously in the public eye since the age of like 18 on one of the biggest reality shows that there ever was. I was young, naive, and you know, probably made a lot of mistakes along the way, but actually, what an exciting life and journey I've had. It was very kind of unique at the time that you kind of went down this different avenue to what everybody else was doing. Mm. I only work with brands that I genuinely love and I think people can actually see that on social media and things. People can like see through you when you're working with someone just for money. It's the power of saying no, isn't it? You've been a big, big advocate of like breastfeeding and showing the real side of being a mum, which mm. I think is bold. Becoming a mum, self-acceptance of what you look like and your body is even more important because as soon as you have a child, for me especially, you look you don't look the same. My heart goes out to parents that spend a lot of time in hospital with your kids because it's it's draining for everyone. It's all you want is your child home safe and healthy. You are technically my sister-in-law now, or are you technically because obviously not, not technically, we're not married yet, so we're not really, but yeah. You're my brother in law. I'd call you my brother in law. So you're so you're officially part of the Thomas family now. How did you meet? <laughs> we're like we met on a deserted island off Panama. Describe that love for your kids. Like, is it like anything you've ever had before? No. Anything that happens to me, I can deal with, I can get over. Anything that happens to my kids, I'm an absolute mess. I can't deal with and I can't get over. Do you know what I mean? I just absolutely love them with everything. And yeah, they're my world. Yes. <laughs> I made it. What is it in here? So this is your side, yeah? Yeah. I'm happy with this. Look, my hair would have been in front of my oh. face. You're very good. Where's, you need to check this, you know, when you've got girls on. I know, to be fair, we, don't, we never ask this question, do we? <laughs> oh, God, really? Great. Okay. Hi, I'm Lucy Mecklenburg, and I'm on... What is it? Learn Le as I go. Learning as I go. Learning as I go. She's got it. Go on, <clears> one more time. Hi, I'm Lucy Mecklenburg, and I'm on Learning As I Go podcast with Scott Thomas. Cheese! Smashed it! So this is an absolute honour. I don't know how I've pulled it off, but I have got the one and only Lucy Mecklenburg <laughs> in the studio. You might know her as Lucy Mech, but um, welcome to Learning As I Go, Luce. Thanks for having me, Scott. So Luce, you are, you are technically my sister-in-law now, or are you technically? Obviously not, not technically, but we are. We're not married yet, so we're not really, but yeah. You're my brother in law. I'd call you my brother in law. So you're so you're officially part of the Thomas family now. Yes. Um, but obviously, Lucy, I have known of you for so long. It feels like you've been around for years. Like to the point, like, I cannot believe to this day that I'm still like five, no, three years older than you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm so yeah. so you're 32, I'm 35. But you've been obviously in the public eye since the age of like 18 on one of the biggest reality shows that there ever was, um, Tawi. Mm. And you have just gone on to have such a successful career. You've blossomed into this businesswoman, this amazing mum, and and you're still around, absolutely killing the game. But talk to me about how it first started and how your life changed at the age of like 18. What an introduction. Thanks, Scott. Um, it was mad. I think the craziest thing about what I did and when I first was in the public eye, it didn't really exist before that. So I think I kind of went into this show thinking, not not a lot really, like it was, you know, it was a bit of fun, whatever. And then it it kind of went really, really crazy and become really popular. And we weren't expecting it. No one else was expecting it, but suddenly the mags, brands, the press, everyone kind of went crazy because it didn't, it hadn't existed before. There was There was no other reality shows really before that. Um, of that, uh, like that, I suppose. Um, and then life just went a bit crazy for me. And I was young, I was a teenager, and I think a lot of people don't actually know that. Um, and I had to then grow up quite quickly. So that's probably why you think I'm older than I am in a way, because I've been, as you say, been around, because I was so young. But you always came across so mature even back then, even when like old episodes pop up, like I don't feel like you've changed that much in terms of like, you've always been really like well put together, come across really mature, but you were just a baby. 18 is so young. Yeah. And back then there was no kind of like social media or social media was just starting. Um, and you literally were like a massive celebrity overnight. How, how did that like feel and what actually was involved in that? I think we didn't think anything of it at first because but you'd film an episode and three days later it'd be on air. So I went out with my friends on a Saturday night and by the following Saturday night, girls were asking me for pictures in the toilets, like of a, of a bar club, wherever I was, like local to me. And I, it was really weird. It was quite funny. So me and I'm still best friends with all of my school friends. 
like the whole way through this journey. And we all just found it hilarious. And then as the time went on, I suppose my life just changed quite quickly. And I don't know, I suppose you're never prepared for it, are you? Because we didn't know it was going to happen. I feel like now people go into situations and go into shows and they know something might happen, but we didn't. And I was young, naive, and, you know, probably made a lot of mistakes along the way. But actually, what an exciting life and journey I've had kind of along the way. But I don't actually think you made that many mistakes. I think you were always kind of quite focused in terms of, like, because as a person, I wouldn't say that you're the most extrovert person. You're not no. like, you're not like us Thomases. I'm not a Thomas. Yeah, us Thomas. <laughs> okay. Not yet, anyway. Ryan's fuming about that. But <laughs> yeah, you're, kind of, you're a bit of a, like, obviously you keep yourself to yourself. You're not out there looking for the limelight and everything else. So when this kind of attention and this platform was given to you, did you start to already kind of start thinking like a businesswoman? Because I know you moved, um, obviously, into, into business um, quite early on in your career and launched RWL. But like, did you start to think about, right, you know what, I'm going to kind of utilize this platform and make a career out of it? Because I feel like that's what the impression I got. Yeah, I think quite early on, I realized the direction I didn't want to go. Mm. So then that helped me guide where I did want to go. Mm. I had some not very nice agents and they wanted me to go down a certain route that I didn't want to do. Um, and then I found my agent, Scarlett, who I'm still with now. And we sort of like planned a career of things that I, I just wanted to do what things that I liked that I had a passion for and I think the more genuine you are in this in this crazy world um it's of the what we do mm. it that's the way you have longevity mm. so I wasn't going to work with brands that I didn't like I wasn't going to be put in situations that I didn't want to be put in so I from an early age and I actually probably have my mum and dad's thank for that how many years were you in the show for I can't even remember probably like Three. So by the time I came out the show, I was still early 20s. And the reason I left is because I'd built up RWL and um, I wanted I wanted something long. I wanted something credible and something with longevity that could bring me an income. Because I was like, right, I've been given this, I've been given this this platform. So Twitter launched, I think, the first year of being when I was on TV. So first of all, it was nothing. And then we got Twitter, like Instagram was way down the line. It's crazy to even think that we didn't have all these platforms before. And um, I remember just putting out workouts and things like that. And it really, people going crazy for it. So me and my personal trainer set up RWL, just really organically. We just love training and we wanted everyone else to love it as much as us. And also everyone to have um, it to be accessible to everyone because I went as her as a personal trainer, but that's obviously not possible for everyone. And I really struggled at the gym. I found, I felt really conscious. I didn't know what to do. I used to pay a fortune on these gym memberships that I never used. So I was like, what can we do? So we filmed all of our favorite workouts and weekly on a website we we put a new workout out every week mm. and that's it just started and actually again like everything I do it was just something I was passionate about that I really believed in and I put it out there and people seemed to love it and mm. and I remember posting it on Twitter and we had no office we had we had no staff no office and the only place in her house because she lived in the countryside that had signal was in her bedroom so me and her sat on her bed and we just pressed like live on her laptop and we had like a couple of thousand uh, members overnight and we were like oh my God, we have a business. What do we do? Maybe we need some staff now. And and then it and it's grown and, you know, we've got a really big team now. We've got um, a film studio with three studios inside it, film studios in it and 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 a great team. And it's and that, you know, that stayed with me. That's 10 years now, just over 10 years we've been going. And I suppose that's probably something I'm really proud of that I started quite early on. But that, right, so go on, Luke, explain to me what actually is RWL and what does it do? So it's an online platform of, workouts, recipes, like um, there's a mindset part, there's a pre and postnatal. So it's everything from your workouts, like ideas and inspiration for recipes. And also there's an, there's an, in the app, there's a community. Um, so you can speak to the personal trainers and speak to the um, other members and just support each other or ask advice. Even say like, does anyone got an idea of a recipe I can, uh, I can do, or even like support, you've just had a baby or when do I get back into training? So there's just all those just a really lovely community of members, personal trainers, nutritionists. And um, yeah, it's become my my first baby, I think it was. Yeah, it sounds like it's an extension of your life and, and, and the lifestyle that you live as well. Yeah, and I think it's grown with me. So the pre and postnatal part existed before I had kids. And then as soon as I had children, I went, oh my 
goodness, I need to change all of this. It shouldn't be a structured plan because no woman that's either pregnant or just had a baby should ever feel like they have, like they have to do this many workouts a week. So I completely changed the whole structure I added, um, help with baby sleep. I help with breastfeeding because actually it's a wellness app. It's not just fitness. Mm. It started just fitness and it's grown and actually all round wellness would be sleep. It would be support in lots of aspects of your life. So it's kind of grown into a bit of a beast now yes. um, compared to it used to be just one workout we put live a week 10 years ago that's how it kind of started that's so smart because obviously in this day and age now it's kind of the natural thing for an influencer or some kind of celebrity to launch a business but back then like to actually take ownership of something and launch your very own business i think that was quite innovative at the time and i think that the fact that it's still around to this day just shows how switched on you were for an early age and i've always said that you always came across like so mature um but at the same time i just want to go back to something you mentioned then about being a little bit kind of well, well you struggled with your your fitness and, and obviously were you, would you say that you were body conscious then from quite a young age i suppose it's down to individual and I think actually a lot of the time when people get into fitness sometimes it's for weight loss sometimes it's because you just really don't feel like you and you mm. don't I would never say I was I was I was big overweight anything like that but I I put on weight um and I was at the age you know I think when maybe I was like 20 I'm going out I'm drinking more You're like in the press. I'm in the press so so and then I remember these pictures coming out of me and I I thought and it wasn't so much the pictures because I'd, I'd had quite a good relationship with my body. My mum mm. is a huge, like, hugely to thank for that. I was brought up in a house that no one was ever on a diet. No food was for forbidden. It was like everything in moderation. And my mum never said anything bad about her body in front of me. And I think actually us girls then got a really good relationship with our bodies mm. from that. Um, so it's something as a mum I want to make sure I do. But then these pictures came out in the press. And... Um, I just remember looking and like, looking and thinking like, oh, maybe, you know, maybe I should do some exercise. And then I read the comments, which I never Oof. do. The comments are so horrible. Like you could be the, the most kindest, loveliest, perfect person in the world and they'd still find fault with you. And they were just like, maybe if she worked out a bit, she'd, she'd you know, she, could be, she just looks this, she looks that. I can't even remember. But they were, they really hit me hard. And, and so there was another lot and I, and I just thought, actually... I kind of thought, well, you know, I'm not unhappy the way I look, but maybe they're right. Maybe I do need to do something. And I looked at my diet and I was like, my diet is really bad. I'm eating just mainly pasta and toast and going out all the time, grabbing pizza on, or McDonald's on the way home. And I was like, that is not how I was brought up. And that's not how I like to eat. So, so I looked at my diet a bit and then I thought maybe I'll start exercising. And I found Cecilia and it changed my life. Within two weeks, it wasn't even so much about my body. I suddenly just woke up with energy, feeling so much more positive, so much more motivation, and just just a better way of life. Mm. Like I don't think there was a huge weight loss transformation for me. It was just, it was mainly a mental, mm. uh, like a, my mental health just improved massively. Mm. And actually I also then, comments like that weirdly, because I was in a better place, didn't bother me anymore, because mm. they still happen. You know, people love to be negative, mm. um, but they well, don't I remember really... it loose because, um... At the time, I don't know, was it like an Alessi campaign that you did or something? Was it Alessi Sports Aww. or something like that you did? And I remember like these images of you and, and you, you, you had abs for like for days and you just looked amazing. And it was very kind of unique at the time that you kind of went down this different avenue to what everybody else was doing. Mm. And that's something that I feel like you've done like all your life. You kind of, you're not scared to go in your own lane. You don't really listen to the noise of what other people are doing. Yeah. And you're just focused on what you want to do and what you feel is <clears> right for you. And that's not easy to do that because you're always like in this world that we live in, comparing yourself to other people and everything else. Where does that self-confidence and belief come from that you have to just like stay in your own lane? <laughs> I don't know. I've never even really thought about it like that until you've said. I think I'm quite stubborn and Ryan will agree. Is if I don't want to do something, I don't, I don't do it. And if I'm really passionate about something, I'll you know, I'll, I'll go for it. And, you know, my dad's always been that in my ear, like the course, be a bit cautious, you know, this. And so I feel like I've, I don't know. I don't really know. But I think, like I said before, if you're really passionate about something, if you believe in something, then that's what you should be doing in your career. Like you, mm. it's, you know, it's not going to work if like everyone 
was doing certain things around me, like you say. And even the way they looked, like we were supposed to have hair extensions and big lashes and this and that. You were always and I very remember, natural. And I remember one day thinking, why am I doing this for everyone else? I don't actually like this. So I took all my extensions out. I cut my hair off. I stripped back my makeup. And I was like, actually, this is me. I don't, I don't feel like I need to do all those other things because everyone... I think maybe that's growing up. You grow up being wanting to be just like your friends and then you get to an age and you're like, actually, I want to do this and this is what I'm going to do. I actually really like this, so I'll do that. So that's why that you say about my career has been quite long maybe in this sort of industry because, you know, some people do come and go or just go down different, different ways with their career is I only work with brands that I genuinely love and I think people can actually see that on social media and things. People can, like, see through you when you're working with someone just for money. Mm. It's the power of saying no, isn't it? Yeah. But like something you mentioned then as well, which is pretty incredible that I know that you've obviously had no work done, like, you know, over the years. And all these people, at, like your account, like what are they called, counterparts in these different shows and everything else, like you've always just been really like kind of natural and just comfortable in your own skin. And I think that that's difficult. Do you know what I mean? It's pretty crazy though, the fact that over the whole, like the span of your career that you've not had to feel like you've had to like modify your body or anything well, like that. Well, it's been tempting. They would throw things at you yeah. years ago, especially, I don't know if it's as easy now as, I don't know if there's more rules and things around it, but I would have in my DMs and my agent would get emailed constantly, like, does Lucy want a free nose job or free Botox or free this and free that? And I'd and I'd be like, no. And I, and I actually, I, and I'd get like messages like, oh, where do you get your Botox done? And this was when I was in my 20s. And I remember thinking, is that, is that normal? Like, am I meant to be getting... It made me feel like I was so different to everyone because I was like, are you meant to get this at this age? Because I don't feel like I've got a reason to get it done yet. And I, and actually, I mean, I'm never saying never and I'm not against it at all. I think everyone needs to do what they they want to do to make themselves... Like, to make themselves mm. feel comfortable and, and confident for, for them. Like, it's not a rule, blanket rule for everyone. But I was just a bit like this is my face, this is my body. And even more so becoming a mum, self-acceptance of what you look like and your body is even more important because as soon as you have a child, for me especially, you look, you don't look the same. Mm -hmm. Like your body's different. And especially I've got a fitness brand is, I think people expect you to look a certain way after having a baby because you've got a fitness brand. Mm -hmm. And actually I really didn't care. It was really strange. Like I enjoyed getting back into fitness eventually when I was ready. But as soon as I had a baby, I was like, even more so, like, it really doesn't matter that much. Like, mm. he's the most, when I had Roman, it's like, he's the most important person in the world. And then I didn't exercise for probably seven months, mm. seven, eight months after Roman. And, and I remember that because obviously I knew you had a wellness plan. I was thinking, it's going to be in a rush to get back in training. But you were always just like, no, nah, I'll just do it when I'm ready. And and again, it keeps coming back to that key word, the word that I've got tattooed on my arm because I'm Oh, uh, what is that? What does it say? Ba balance. I can't see it from here. It's, my it's, eyes, maybe I need glasses. It, 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 it's, it's my first ever tattoo and it says balance. That's something that I'm always craving for. And if you know us Thomas brothers, you know we don't have much balance. Like you're all or nothing. Yeah, we're all or nothing. Boys. Whereas with you, it's like you, you seem to be really balancing everything that you do. And obviously I've seen the power of wellness and like looking after yourself and how that kind of can um, lead to like a lot more happiness and everything else. What would you say are your like kind of like number one tips, obviously, to in, when it comes to like self-development, looking after yourself? What would you say like keeps you on track the most? I think knowing you. So if you wake up in the morning and you feel like you've got no energy and you don't feel great, like why is that? Is that your diet? Is that you need to introduce fitness? Is it because you're getting no time with your friends, you're working too much? Like I think know yourself. You know like that feeling after Christmas and you feel like, Ugh. Mm. like if you're feeling like that a lot of the time, what is the reason that you don't feel happy? Getting to know yourself and getting to know what you might need to tweak in your life. So for me after just a, a really random scenario, it's like, having kids I remember me and Ryan sitting there one day and saying god we, we don't go out as like we used to obviously we have a, a newborn child but why don't we why don't we book a babysitter and go out and have a meal and like feel like us before like so it's fine to that remembering that we enjoyed that and make, fitting it in. So even if you don't have kids, like, are you just working too much? Are you not sleeping enough? Are you eating the right food that's good for you? Are you do you know what I mean? It's just finding your but Getting it completely right and being perfect isn't, it doesn't exist. So striving to have this perfect life, this perfect balance is never going to happen. It's always going to be really busy times of work and you let your diet slip and actually just accepting that that's okay. It's fine. Next week I'll start again. Yeah, that's something that you're really good at putting across, especially on, on your socials and stuff. You really do show like the reality of situations, especially motherhood and stuff. But before we get to that, I want to talk about 
Something that really baffles me, the fact that you took on Bear Grylls, the island, right? <laughs> knowing you and knowing like how difficult that show is, like you're basically going to um, a deserted island and you're left on there with a bunch of like other celebrities, left to your own devices, no food, no shelter, and you've got to fend for yourselves. And for some like bizarre reason, you decide to take this challenge on. Talk to me about why you decided to take that on. So coming from a reality show, as much as it gave me an amazing career, I was always striving for people to take me seriously. So everything I did after that show, I wanted to do to build up my credibility. And actually a passion of mine was like pushing myself out of my comfort zone. So before Bear Grylls, I'd done Tumble, which was like gymnastics and acro, like oh, live, on, live on BBC yes. One doing this thing completely out of my comfort zone. And then I, I cycled part of the Tour de France. Um, and... And they're all quite fitness based because it's what I enjoy. And then Bear Girls came along. And I just remember thinking, I think this is just too much. I don't think I can do this. Like, I just don't. And I th but I think when someone plants something in my head, I hate it, admitting to myself that I can't do something. So I was like, I'll go for the meeting. And I was at the meeting and they went. So we've signed up. Um, RJ from Bear, you might know him from um, Breaking Bad and Ryan Thomas, you may know him. And I was like, oh no, you're joking. And I walked out and went, I'm not doing it. <laughs> I went, I'm not doing it. And Amaya was like, why? Like, you'll be so good at it. You love these challenges. I was like, but Ryan's doing it. No way, he's been sliding into my DMs for the last three years. And I just can't be bothered with it. And he, she was like, oh, come on. He's good looking. I went, I know he is, but I'm not interested. But this is crazy, right? Because you actually are, not a secret, but you are you were a big Coronation Street fan. Oh, I'm a huge soap fan. Which like, is I mad. watched them all. I was the person that was like Coronation Street EastEnders, Coronation Street, or like before that, Hollyoaks, and sometimes Hollyoaks Omnibus. Wow. Like, or whatever it was, the neck, the plus one to watch the next episode. I loved so. And, and am I right in thinking that you did fancy Ryan until he started pesting you in the DMs? Is that right? Oh, I always fancied Jason Grimshaw. Yeah, of course. But you didn't Who fancy didn't? Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? I just, no, it's, it's, it's kind of a joke. I just didn't want, like at the time, I didn't want to be dating someone and I knew that he liked me and I, I kind of didn't want to do it for that reason. But anyway, I said yes and the rest is history. But, but we wait, are where we are. But wait a second, when you were sliding into your DMs, what, because he threw in some really cheesy like oh he's horrendous he's what? got he's got zero chat go on what was love it? him to be was it a reference of a milkshake oh yeah can we go out for it like most people would be like can I take you out for a drink can I take you out for dinner like or because I used to work in Manchester all the time I shot all of my LS up here I shot like a few brands I did photo shoots up here a lot and I think if he saw me, he'd, he'd like message me like you'd think you'd say oh I've seen you're working in Manchester so can I take you out for a drink after are you staying up tonight da 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 no, 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 he didn't do that. He messaged me like, can I take you out for a milkshake sometimes? Lol. <laughs> and I was like, and I didn't even reply. Do you know what though? To be fair to Ryan, that was like a bit of boys banter that we used to like, I think it actually came from Mark Anderson, where basically it goes like his chat was like, do you want to go for a milkshake? It's a bit like American, it's meant to be funny. But it, for someone who doesn't get that banter. It wasn't funny. Yeah, it must have been horrific. I was like, what, he's like, this is weird. And like you know a coffee, like a drink or a coffee, like yeah. go for a glass of red wine or a coffee. I was like, a milkshake? I'm not five. <laughs> and there wasn't there a time actually, because I remember, Luce, you came to my night, Avisa, this is before Ryan, yeah. before we even knew each other. There's even a picture of us that I've got still. Uh, and wasn't Ryan floating around that night and you saw him and he was dead loud and stuff. He came over to the table. So there was a night, I don't know if it was that one. I don't think he was there. I think it was, I went for, a, I'd done a photo shoot and I was, was with my team in Rosso. And there was like a table of like Ryan, Brooke were next to me and Ryan came over. So this must have been a good year or two before we did Bear Grylls together. And he came over and he was like, oh, like, hi girls, da, da, da. do you want to come out like for a drink after we're going to, I don't know where. And um, and I was like, yeah, but you know what I'm like? I'm not like you guys. So I'm not like, yeah, that'd be amazing da, 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 because that's just not my personality. So I went, yeah, like a bit coy and... Um, and then he got up and left and didn't tell me where or didn't like didn't come over and go, we're leaving now if you want to come with us. And I was really upset. I was like, oh, but that was it. And I didn't see him for like a wow. year or two after so that. So the next time you saw him was on... He basically said that he thought I wasn't interested. I was just sort of saying, yeah, to be polite. Ah, so you played it too cool. 
No, I was just me. Oh, right, yeah, you just, I yeah. just, I'm just not like, yeah, yeah. I'm just not really like loud and bubbly like you guys are. Wow. And we're, we're chalk and cheese, aren't we really, me and Ryan? Yeah, you are, <laughs> which is mad. But then you ended up on this island and somehow on this like horrific, <laughs> like deserted island, you guys managed to fall in love. <laughs> and I remember watching this going, what's going on like? Because you couldn't even clean your teeth. You were just like... It was horrific, the weather, like, you look like... It was both, horrendous. You're in turmoil, and somehow... And to be fair to you, Luce, you were so resilient on there. Like, I don't ever remember you, like, complaining. Like, it just seemed like you got your head down. Ryan was quite similar as well. He was a bit... When Ryan does a challenge, he's very much like Ryan that as well. Ryan was amazing. I actually don't think... Because, obviously, you can't control the edit of 24 hours yeah. a day. Do you know what I mean? He was brilliant. He stayed up every night, just him, all night to keep the fire on. Like, and that was so important to us because that's how we cooked our food, kept warm, dried our clothes. Like, we had one set of clothes. Mm. Well, like, literally one set of clothes. It was horrendous for 30 days. And, um, I mean, I definitely moaned a bit more than he did, for sure. Um, but we just... Do you know what? You're never going to meet anyone and get to know them. In, you almost have to get to know them again in the real world. Mm. And that's what someone actually said to me when I come out. And it's completely true because you, you're you meeting this really raw version of them. Like no makeup, no toothbrush, as you say, like nothing. And But you've got hours and hours to talk. So I feel like our week, um, our month on there felt like two years. Mm. So then when we came off... Again, it was a bit strange because it's like we, we're getting to know each other in the real world. And like what we really do, like our normal life. I'm just laughing because it's ironic because I've done the exact same, but in a glamorous island. So I did Love yeah. Island, but obviously, and I know the bonds that are formed. Yeah. But when you come out, but to be fair, like you guys must have formed an even stronger bond to have like no luxuries, nothing, and still manage to find that. Kind. And also you probably mm -hmm. saw each other at your worst as well. Oh, 100%. Like he would persuade me to stay. And I think we really helped each other get to the end because I think naturally we were a similar age. We had friends in, like, with people we knew in common and liked the same things on the outside world, I suppose. And, um, and we just talk for hours and hours and hours. And actually, when you when you come off and you get into your real world, you go for dinner for two hours and there's only so much. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, it's not, we'd stay up and like literally lay on the beach, look at the stars and talk for hours. Mm. Like, it was amazing. It was, it's an unbelievable thing. We love it when we're on holiday and it'll be like an American couple next mm. to us at the bar. And they're like, how did you meet? And we're like, mm. we met on a deserted island in off Panama. <laughs> Wow. And it's like such a great, and actually we've never watched it back together. So I think Why? when the kids are a little bit older, I think we should sit down as a family and watch the show back. Yeah. I want to watch it back. I mean, that, that's the best romance story I've ever heard. Like to meet in that scenario and then still to be, get, be together to stay engaged is incredible. But let's talk about, obviously you came out into the real world. You're very much a Southern girl. You've come and met Ryan's family, the Northern boys, and, and obviously me and Adam are a massive part of his life. You know how obsessed he is with us and stuff and all our family. He basically comes with a lot of baggage. Like, <laughs> baggage. I love that you're calling yourself well, baggage, we Scott. are baggage. The Thomas family, <laughs> you get one of us, you get all of us. You do. So, I actually remember Caroline saying that to me. Yeah. And so obviously <laughs> you, coming... You buy one, get two, three. Yeah. Right? That's what she said. But like coming into that, and like I said, you and Ryan are like chalk and cheese. And I think a lot of the, some of those elements are down to the nor northern and southern divide as well. Do you like, reckon? I think, yeah, I think like well, one thing I've noticed by spending more south, uh, more time down south, like people are just different, like in, in different ways. Like you're not very like huggy and affectionate or... I think you, some people are, yeah. I am not. No, but honestly, I think but just in general, for any southern listeners, don't take offense, but like I, I, I went to a, a party down south recently. And I, yeah, I was a bit blown away by like, literally no one came people, to give me a hug. I think London people do keep themselves to themselves a little mm. bit more. And also, I think it's definitely a faster pace of life, London, to Manchester City Centre. Like, it's com I feel like it's completely different. Um, but I'm really enjoying that slower, slightly slower pace of life and sort of the open house, like, policy. Like, anyone comes and goes when they want. Like, I love it. I think it's, it's really nice and we're really enjoying it. And, you know, we now see ourselves here for the foreseeable, which... I mean, I've been here three months, so mm. you never know, but... Yeah, it seems like he's settling, because obviously Ryan was down south for, like, seven years, and then he's finally, like, persuaded to come back here. No, 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 Scott. Okay. He bought a house... Yes. ...that took three years to renovate. So it wasn't me. We could have been here three years ago. Right. If he hadn't have... So I said Typical to... Typical Ryan, he went and bought a, a house, didn't he, without him telling you? So I said... It was kind of lockdown, to be fair on him. So... 
I had a ba- we had the baby and Ryan would come up and see Scarlett and um, I couldn't always come with the baby because it was quite, it's a lot of traveling. So I said to him, he, we were been viewing houses for a while and I said, if you find something you love, send me like the pictures or whatever and just go for it. And then he rung me one day, typical Ryan, all or nothing style. We viewed about 30 houses. He went, I bought a house today. And I was like, and my, my offer's been accepted. And I was like, um, can you like send me what it looks like? Where is it? He went, it's this town. Da, da. I don't actually know it very well there, but the house is really pretty. And I don't think it needs that much work. And I was like, and I had certain things I wanted, which he didn't get tick any of them, if I'm honest with you. And um, and I got there and I was like. It's a bomb <laughs> And I was, because my dad's a, a developer, a property developer, and I've done up a couple of places. Um, it's a huge passion of mine. And I got there and I looked and I saw these like plug sockets like this big, like them, you know, those small old cream oh, ones wow. hanging out the walls. And like, and I just looked and I was like, it needs rewiring, replumbing. And it needed like going back to brick. Like it was, it was a huge job and it needed an extension. Like it needed everything doing to it. And because of, we fell pregnant again and living down south, it took the project took us three years, wow. which is a huge, obviously a huge amount of time. So I probably would have been up north quicker. Um, but actually, I think everything in life, and I honestly believe this, everything happens for a reason. And actually having those first couple of years of my kids down south with my family, Makes sense, yeah. I think actually I would never, I would never have wanted that any any other way. And since living here, my, they visit me all the time. But I think those first, you know, months especially with my babies, I needed to be near my mum. Mm. And I'm so glad I was. Yeah, it makes sense. And obviously I've seen you like kind of over time really kind of settling into Manchester and, and, and I can see that you, you're starting to enjoy it, which is which is amazing. But let's talk about being a mum. Stop mo- inviting me to events. I'm having oh, too much no. of a good time, Scott. Lucy's out in town, <laughs> out in Sexy Fish, Peter Street <laughs> Kitchen. I've seen you getting about in town. I love it. But in terms of um, like the massive moment in your life, obviously was having your first child, and you just threw yourself into that kind of role as a, as a mum and, and, and you really documented your journey as well. And I think um, you become for me like one of like, one of the most real and like credible mummy influences in terms of the way that you've not been shy to kind of <laughs> share the highs and the lows. Um, you've been a big, a big advocate of like breastfeeding and showing the real side of being a mum, which mm-hmm. I think is bold uh, in a world where people just like to show the highlight reels and stuff like that. And... I do think it's changing, though. I, there's one thing I've loved about it. Yeah, but I it. think you're a massive part of that change. Do you think? Yeah. I think it's a really nice part that social media, it comes with a lot of pressures and seeing lots of people's, like, perfect houses and, like, children dressed perfectly and, and everything like that. But I do think it's become a new thing of showing realness. No, it is. But at the time, I, I'll be honest with you, Liz, like, when I saw you, like, breastfeeding on some of your videos and stuff, like, I didn't know where to look. And, like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Because I felt like I'm not even... Like, and even sometimes as but a family. But which is not really, but, which is not really, it's not even your fault. Like, it's because I suppose on social media and things, I think it's like, I think a lot of people have seen it, especially in this country, it's something almost you do behind closed doors. But actually, if my baby needs to feed and I've got to record something social media or I'm out for lunch or whatever, yeah. I will feed my baby and mm. I'm not changing that for anyone or any situation. Um, and I think actually a lot of people come forward and said, you know, they didn't like that I did that. But also a lot of women were like, oh my God, like I was so nervous to leave the house because I chose to breastfeed. Um, and it's really working for us, but I, I've literally stayed at home. But now I see you out, like me and Ryan will be out and he'll post like a video when we're out and I'll just be sat there breastfeeding while eating my pasta. And they're like, I can't believe like you do that. that like I, you've given me the confidence to go out. And if I could help one person, I'll give some of that confidence. But I kind of never even thought of it like that. I was just get plodding along with my life. And but if honestly, my baby needed to be fed, I fed them. Yeah, but honestly, you educated me because even when we'd be out for a family dinner and I'd see you breastfeeding, I didn't know where to look. And I was like, <laughs> is this normal? But then you normalized it. And I think yeah. that was quite courageous like to, to, to do that and put it out to social media and stuff because obviously you're going to receive um, like... Mixed messages. Uh, mixed, mixed messages on that. And I think that's something I wanted to touch on because you really threw yourself into being that kind of... You threw yourself into being a really a beautiful mother and, and owning that role. But also one thing I've noticed, especially when it comes to parenting, there's no kind of like right or wrong answer and people have already always got an opinion. So mm. did you find that like, because I've seen some of your pictures and videos before and stuff where you've got mixed comments and stuff like that. Like, 
is it hard to navigate what is right as a parent or do you just think it's kind of specific to that individual? I don't think there's any wrong or right in parenting. And obviously some things there are, but most things it's you're the parent, you make the decision and not everyone's going to like the decision that you make or how you bring up your children. But ultimately, if you think, we're all just winging it as well. Like mm. I remember bringing Roman home from hospital and putting him in the car seat, like in the living room. And me and Ryan just sort of sitting there looking at him and I was like, what do I do now? <laughs> like mm. what, what happens next? And then it's just like crazy and, and it's all new and you're kind of just making it up as you go along. And... And it's, and it's tough, actually. Do you know what? Social media hugely helped me because I'd ask for advice and tips and sometimes I'd put things up. And again, there'll be people say, that's not the right thing to do. This is right, this is wrong. And actually, it isn't one size fits all being a parent and you've just got to go with the flow and what you think's right. And, and you know, and I think I've done a, an all right job. I think you've done an amazing <laughs> job. Do you do a lot of research then? Because I feel like you're quite knowledgeable. In- I mean, I had certain things happen. Roman had a milk allergy and he had tongue tie and he had all this. So 2 a.m. for me was just Googling a million things. But I can imagine if many mums watch, listening to this will agree that you kind of in the middle of the night when you're feeding the baby, you become this like Google, 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 asking all your friends. And a lot of my friends have babies at the same time. So we got super close. But with that becomes comparing Roman didn't sleep. He was up every oh, hour for months and months. And my other friend, Lydia, yeah. her baby slept 12 hours a night from a few weeks old. And I was like, oh, no, what am I doing wrong? But you're not. And anyone says that you're not doing anything wrong. All babies are different. And they do things at different times. And, and yeah, you, I, did, I did have to do a lot of research because of his milk allergy. And I had to cut milk dairy out of my diet, which was, if anyone knows me, really difficult. Um, but And he had his tongue tied separate so he could breastfeed better. Um but you just, you just. Roman wasn't an easy child, was he? Like growing up, like from what I remember, it was. He was, he was, he was hard because he was, um, he was in pain. So it's and it's really hard when you're sleep deprived and you've got a baby that's crying a lot and you're trying to work out what's wrong and they can't tell you. It's really, really difficult. It's and you know, I'm sure every parent at some point has had that when they're just crying and you're like, I don't know what to do to mm. help you. Um, but you get through it. And my sister's just had a baby, Winnie. She's three months old, and I'm like. Remember, everything's a phase. You know, they they get out of it. And if you think there's anything more going on, you know, do your research, go and speak to a specialist, get support. Um, and I'd always say that if you're if you're struggling, find someone to help you, um, and or ask your friends, or go and see your doctor because there is usually someone that can support and help you mm. as well. And you've had some difficult times with Roman o- over mm. the years with like some like late night runs to the hospital and, and stuff like that. Like what happened then? Because obviously, I know as a family, like. That was a really difficult time. So yeah, so Roman's got something called an unsafe swallow. There's a few names for it, but I suppose it's the unsafe easiest. swallow. So it's sort of the easiest way to explain it is when this is how a doctor explained it to me. I, I hope if any medical professionals are listening, this isn't exactly right. Um, they said when he drinks fluids, a little bit goes to his lungs. So day to day, he could kind of deal with, especially when he was being breastfed, that they can they can actually tolerate that. But then when he started eating and drinking other things, so it was just, it was probably from weaning age, from six, seven months, when Roman would get a cold, we didn't know, we didn't know this and we didn't know why, but he couldn't get a cold and recover. He got a cold and he'd been in hospital for a week. So, and he'd need a lot of medication. And and then it got really bad when he was about, um, about a year. He... I don't want to cry. No. <laughs> <laughs> he had to go on a ventilator mm. because he was so poorly. And then from that, we got referred to the Royal Brompton, who are an unbelievable hospital. St. Mary's looked after him when he was on the ventilator. And then um, Royal Brompton now still look after him because he still has the condition. Um, and we had loads and loads of tests done. And after several tests, because I was like, I can't be dealing with this anymore. Like, it's I can't watch my child be this poorly. Um we found out his problems and now he drinks thickened fluids. So that means basically then the water doesn't, the fluid doesn't go to his lungs. So it's more like a jelly consistency, which I'm sure you've seen. Um, But that's keeping it at bay. He's not on any medication anymore. Is that on no asthma pumps anymore? So he's he's getting better. Fingers crossed he will be off of the fluid thickness while in time for going to school, which I just, um, part of me would really love him to be off it before school so he's not different. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I feel mm. like school's tough enough as it is, you know, and I think him having to have separate drinks and separate this, it, it'll be quite hard for him. So I'm just hoping for his health and before school that he 
fingers crossed will be better mm. but it's something that kids usually grow out of yeah. but it's been it's been a rough road like it's been it's been really difficult and it's been a lot of mm. hospital visits and and my heart goes out to parents that spend a lot of time in hospital with your kids because it's it's draining for everyone it's all you want is your child home safe and healthy and they're in a hospital with screaming babies and children so then they can't sleep they can't recover and and you're watching them like all the medication everything and it's really it's really really hard and worrying it, mm. it's 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 been a it's been a really rough road with his health but mm. it's getting better yeah it's it's interesting when i see you talk about roman and, and lila ray and stuff like you've got that kind of lioness like love for those kids and describe that love for your kids like is it like anything you've ever had before no there's no love uh, for me everyone's different for me there's no love like I've ever felt for my children I'd do anything for them and I don't know if that's I, I don't think the worry and the love more in a way because of Romans had health issues that I do worry a lot about them and I, and I just I absolutely adore them I think before kids I'm like anything that happens to me I can deal with I can get over anything happens to my kids I'm an absolute mess I can't deal with and I can't get over do you know what I mean mm. I just absolutely love them with everything and yeah they're my world well, you've done an amazing job because they're both like stars and Roman now it's just like Romans are pure Thomas and yeah. Lila is me yeah they are both literally they're literally me and Ryan because Roman is so loud and has got so much character his nursery thing is hilarious and yeah everyone says he's, he's literally a mini Ryan he's so so loud and then Lila's a little bit more reserved you can tell already um she's yeah my little angel. So obviously you, you, you've inspired a lot of people out there now with your, like your mum, um, your mummy content and, and everything you're doing like is just so authentic and, and real. And I think that's a testament to why you're working with some of the biggest brands. Like you've just signed a big deal with Very over the last year and, and stuff like that. It's like, this world is changing though. Like the influencer world, the celebrity world, there's TikTok coming through the ranks. Um, there's so much going on. How do you stay sane and relevant and credible in this kind of world in this world that we live in now because you managed to do it like you're still working um like re relentlessly you, you, you're still top of the, like the food chain in my eyes when it comes to the influencer world like how have you managed to stay sane and almost i don't like to use the word compete but in a, in a way you have to kind of compete in this industry that we that we live in i think again that's staying authentic to me and doing things that i love and i think people just your like your audience stay with you and i I thought, oh God, like the TikTok and all of this come. And if I'm honest, I'm not on it. I tried for like once. Mm. <laughs> and Scarlett said I was really uncool. Um, and I was just like, do you know what? It doesn't come natural to me. It isn't something that I enjoy, but I enjoy Instagram. So I was like, well, why am I, why do I feel the need I have to do it? And maybe I will, maybe I'll find out there's something on there I could be posting and then it works for me. But it is really hard. It's changed so much. Social media started you were just showing your life. So Twitter was just like your opinions. It'll be like a TV show was on and everyone wrote their opinions, didn't they? Mm. And then Instagram was like just showing your life. And now it's become a lot more planned, a lot more staged maybe than, than it than it used to be. It's almost, it's a full-time job. And I take my hat off to the, the new load of influencers mm. because they work insane hours. They work so hard. They create this incredible content. And actually, I always just think, What's the point of me pretending to be something I'm not? I just post what I do. I, what do I love? I post workouts. I post recipes, cooking with the kids. I post, I love fashion. So I'll show my outfits before I go out on a night out or my favorite, something I've bought that I love. And I just try and stay authentic. And maybe that keeps me in my own way relevant. I don't know. But mm. um, I just try not to be like someone else because what's yeah. what's the point? I think it's just one thing you managed to do, Lucy. You just, you just stay grounded. You stay grounded throughout the whole kind of process and, and stay true to, to who you are um but obviously you were like the one of the first i mean the first ever ambassador for like pretty little thing like all those years ago and you obviously seen them now working with the likes of like naomi campbell like you have seen the whole industry <laughs> change and, and transform like where do you see yourself going in like the next five years like like how do you see your career going I you're still know. still you're still so young it's really weird because I've never been like a five-year plan or, or setting myself all these goals because I think sometimes it puts too much pressure on yourself. And I know loads of people love, I think you probably love working like that. Mm. Um, and it works for some people. For me, it just feels like pressure, especially if I don't hit things that I want to do. But I'm just happy. I'm really content. I, I want to be able to be seeing my kids. So again, it's that balance. 
the work I do now, I'm really enjoying. Like we've just launched retreats, which is another sort of string to the bow. And I'm, I love it. I, lo I absolutely love it. And I usually take the kids over to Portugal, go and do some workouts and get involved with the women on the retreats. And it's just, I want to continue stuff like that. Stuff that I really enjoy that I'm passionate about, but also having being able to see my kids still a lot and not being away from them loads because they're so young and I want to see them grow up, you know? I don't want to always be working. So I kind of just want to keep this balance that I've mm. got, continue working with brands I love, continue building and expanding RWL and just, I suppose that, but, but again, not putting too much pressure on myself to have a certain size house, a certain career or earn this much money. Like I'm not really that, I'm yeah. not really driven like, by that. Yeah, I've never really actually heard you talk like that. Like, oh, Scott, I need to get this. So I need to, I want this. Like you never, you just kind of sort of just, just naturally work your way through life. And, and I think that's, sometimes those are the best kind of like influences and even just people like who achieve ultimate success because they're not putting too much pressure on it. And I think sometimes I personally put too much pressure on, I need to be here at this point. Whereas with you, it's like, I never come around <coughs> to your house and you're going, oh, Scott, I really need this or I really need that. It's never really like that with you. You kind of just take just, it all in your stride. I think, especially after having kids, if everyone around me is happy and healthy and there's food on the table and I'm a bit like, I'm content and I'm happy. So anything else is a bonus. Mm. And and I just, and do things that I'm passionate and I love. And if I look at what I'm doing and I'm not happy with it and I'm not enjoying it, then I'll move on to something else. Mm. And I think for me, obviously observing you and Ryan over the last few years, like some kind of science experiment when I just said observing. <laughs> um, but I feel like even genuinely now, like you two are the happiest I've ever seen you. Like in terms of like, it just, it just <clears> seems to like really work, which is weird for me because you and Ryan are just completely off, like the opposites. Like your Ryan's like hundred miles an hour, like kind of in your face, big people person. You're just kind of really grounded, balanced. Like, do you know what I mean? And he's so like, like right, like oh, what's the word? Spontaneous as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas when you have children, it's very hard. So at first, <laughs> I think he was like fighting against that, like being spontaneous and stuff. But I think after everything that we've been through with the kids and just even having kids and finding our new normal and our new sort of the way our relationships works. And I think for us, the massive thing that's changed and grown in our relationship is communication. We have to communicate because if you don't communicate with your partner, especially when you have children, I think that's when things can get really difficult. So we will regularly have these like almost like mini resets where we're like, what's working for you? What do you feel like you need more of? So like he might say to me, God, I haven't played paddle or I haven't seen my friends for a while and I'm like right let's make that happen in the next couple of weeks and I'll, I might say something else I might say oh, I'm really missing my mum I want to go down south for 24 hours can you have the kids when will that best work for you like whatever it may be or we haven't been on a date night for a month or so I kind of we just it's just that communication to keep things even if it might be when was the last time you did the dishwasher because it will turn into an argument if you don't just sit and have a conversation so we just try and it's something that Ryan's hugely improved and he's made the effort for me 100% that we now sit, just talk things through, how we can make everything work better as a family. Oh, I like that. The power of communication. Mm -hmm. Someone said, to, well, I listened to a podcast actually recently and he said, if you ever sit down and ask someone, just go, what are the three things that are stopping you from being happy right now? Like, oh, that's and, it's, and he powerful. said, it's such a good question because straight away the person's like, wow, you're actually listening to me and you're understanding me. And I was like, wow, that is a good question. So... Maybe that's something that you can put in one of your next reset little uh, meetings as well. Yeah. But yeah, you and Ryan just like, it just seems to work. And I think that the word sometimes opposites attract makes a lot of sense. We, the weird thing is though, we are opposite, but then we do love all the same things. We're like huge foodie people. Yes. We love um, being abroad. We love, like there's certain things that, that we've always loved, but we're just kind of different. But I think we even each other out because two Ryans wouldn't work and maybe two me's wouldn't. Mm. So I think that... We kind of level each other out somewhere mm. in the middle. Hundred percent. What would you say are Ryan's like kind of best qualities? Because obviously Ryan's Ryan says to me a lot recently as well, like you don't understand like what that girl has done for me. Because I know like Ryan's been through a, a, like a tricky couple of years, like finding his feet in certain areas, and he says that you just had his back and you've just like been his backbone, and he speaks so like like he's just. And he's obsessed with you. He's always been obsessed with you. Like, but he's like, like more so than ever, he's just like, you just don't understand what this girl has done for me. Like, with Ryan, though, like, what would you say of his free qualities? Because I know you listed something on Instagram once and Ryan was like, I'm doing this for Ryan, by the way, because Ryan's going to want to hear this. I think he 
is everyone's biggest cheerleader. Mm. No matter who you are, you could be the postman. And it, he just he loves does. everyone. He'll cuddle the postman. He'll tell him, have an amazing day. You're doing a mm. great job. Like, and he'll do that to, like, he'll do that to everyone. And he's so positive. And the, the household I was brought up in wasn't not like that at all, it, but it was more subtle, you know, whereas my dad was quite practical and things like that. So being around a, um, like, a, like a, a male figure, I guess, that's super like energetic, positive, compliments. It was so different for me. Mm. Whereas my dad would be like, well done, but make sure you do it. Like he yeah. was really like, you know, practical about things. And I wasn't used to that, but he's so, he's just, he would do anything for anyone. He'd put everyone before himself. He always has. And yeah, he's just, you know what he's like to be around. And he'd, you rung him now and you asked him to do something, he'd do it. No, the, the only problem is though, if, because he knows that, then you have to do what he does when he asks you to do his favor. <laughs> That's the problem. Like, Maybe it's just really clever. No, so he, he is, does it for that reason. <laughs> for years, Ryan would literally, because Ryan and you would go, right, we come here, we grab Scarlet from here, we just, and you can't say no because he's already done so much for you. And you're just like, oh, you bastard. You're so nice. You're going to have to do it. <laughs> but um, what, what, one piece of advice, Luce, like looking back to old Lucy, like young 18 year old Lucy who was on the, in those Towie scenes and like, what what advice would you, if you had one piece of advice to give her now that you've learned over this time, what would it be? I don't know if I would, because I think I wouldn't be the person I am now if I hadn't have just gone through the natural process of growing up that I did. Mm. Like, I know that sounds weird, so I wouldn't give an advice. I'd just say, go with it. Believe mm. in yourself and just go with what you want to do. And I kind of did that anyway. Like, I don't have any regrets because I think, what's the point? Every mistake I've ever made, I've learned from it. So I don't really have ad advice to my old self. Um, I think it's just a natural process of growing up mm. and learning to build your confidence and have the strength to say, no, I don't want to do that. I want to do this. But I naturally did that over time anyway. And I think we all need to do that anyway, mm. like learn it naturally. Yeah, 100%. And I think if that, like, if someone said to young 18 year old Lucy, like, this is where you're going to be at the age of 32 and would you take it as a deal? I'm pretty sure that she would because I think you've absolutely smashed it. And, and and even just now, like when we're, we don't really sit down and talk like this, but like usually because we've both got one of my children, yeah, climbing much, all over yeah. us. <laughs> but it, it is like when I take a minute to stop and like kind of like appreciate your life and how you approach life and what you've achieved and how you've done it. I think for me, I always look up to people who are so balanced and like really kind of like understand who they are as a person and don't kind of get influenced by other people and compare themselves with people. I think like you've done a really good job at that. And I think you just absolutely like smashed it. So it's actually a really bad place to be comparing and being jealous. I think no, hundred percent. try not to do that and try and make your own happiness in your world. Mm. 100%. And Lucy, I know you don't do many podcasts, but you've absolutely <laughs> smashed it today. I really enjoyed it. And Thanks, it's been Scott. an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. Oh, <laughs> that was amazing, man. Thank you so much. So I don't know how I pulled it off, but I managed to get Lucy Mech on my podcast. And even though she's family, I feel like I learned so much from today. And I've got a newfound respect for Lucy because her career has been a long one, but it's also been a one full of tests. And she could have quite easily lost who she was along the way. But she's always had this real sense of direction and she's not compared herself to other people. She's stayed in her own lane and she's carved out a really successful career for herself. And I think that's because she stayed authentic to who she is. And I think authenticity is one of the biggest life lessons that I took away from this podcast. And I hope you did too. It's been an absolute flyer to Series 4 already and you guys have gone crazy. So thank you for all your support. I've seen all your DMs. I've seen all your tags on social media. So keep them coming at me at scott.thomas on Instagram and I will make sure that I come back to you and reshare anything that you post. But please continue to support the podcast. It means so much. Make sure you subscribe as well on whichever platform that you listen to the podcast on and we are going to keep building this and making it bigger, better and bringing you some incredible guests. So thank you again and I'll see you next week for another life lesson with learning as I go. Hold up. 